Oh, I can't even look at the computer yet because we have so many comments already. <laughs> Shayna, what is this, a live off? That's funny. Let me readjust myself, people. Bob the Traveler standing stung with Israel. Bob, we love you. BT, we love you. I'm sorry, Barack, I'm a moderator and Tal's channel must appear here. Of course, we got the notifications. NR just came across the news that Haifa Airport was bombed. Everyone's safe. So, um, I'm going to fill everybody in on... First, I wanna let people trickle in. Let's give this a couple minutes. We have nine likes. Nine likes. What is our tradition? I think some of you guys know what the tradition is at this point. Please drop your flag right where you are from, where you are calling from or joining from. Right. Um, what's your flag? Um, guys, happy Thursday. Guys and gals, happy Thursday. We got six people in the room. And we have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about here. And then in 45 minutes, we have a lot to talk about with the traveling clap. Um, I know that there is a decision to be made between right now being on my live stream and being on Tal's live stream. And uh, unfortunately, we are both streaming at the same exact time. Well, we got, we got some more people in the room. Um, if you are just joining now and you are looking forward to this, let's get a thumbs up. The more thumbs up we have, don't, don't type thumbs up, we need to like this. We need to like the, like the stream. The more people that are liking this, the more people that we can get into this room, okay? So, um, the way, amazing. Robert, I'm gonna get to these questions from Clat. Yes, so the way that this is going to work, if you guys didn't already see, um, assuming most of you did, we're gonna spend about 45 minutes together here. We're gonna walk through what's going on, what the past like 18, 24 hours has been like for me and for Israel. And at 7.45, I'm going to encourage everybody in this room, I'm gonna actually write it right now, um, at 19.45, we all go to the Traveling Clat live stream. At 7.45, all of us are going to go to uh, Tall, the Traveling Clat's live stream, okay? And I'm going to be joining, joining from Pakistan, amazing. Please, please write where you guys are. Where are you guys right now? Please drop your flag, please write the country. Uh, I wanna know where we got people on, on this call. Um, in about 45 minutes, we're all going to leave this live stream and then I'm going to be Scotland, amazing Robert, and I'm going to be joining uh, Tall on his live stream, but we're gonna be, uh, it'll be split screen, I believe, and we're, we're A-B testing this. So for the 16 people in this room who have decided to, um, you know what? I can actually pull up his stream right here. Let's see what, he, what he's got. Tall's a monster, so he probably has way more people than I do, which is okay. <laughs> He's starting at 7.05. <laughs> Fucking genius. <laughs> Tall's a fucker. He's starting at 7.05. Um, Nathan, what is up? Chrome, what is up? All right. That little fucker. He's smart. Tall's very smart. Um... So here's... So let's go. Oh, he's in here. Guys, Tal's in here. The man is in here. The fucking man is in here. The traveling cloud is in here. You're gonna be pumped up. Everybody at 745, we're gonna start right now. Tal, we're coming to your chat room. So everybody is going to leave this chat room. We're gonna go to Tal, we're gonna join. I'm gonna join him, we're gonna talk. Tal, get the fuck out of my room. I love you. All right. Um, people, here's what's going on in Israel. Um, on Monday, the IDF led an airstrike out in Syria. It ended up killing some very high military officials, um, part of uh, mil military officials that dent, I'm in Saudi Arabia, Filipino, I love Israeli. Kaswi, we love you. Um, one second, I'm having a glitch here. Try this. 
because I want to be able to get the comments on my computer. Also, um, I'm in right now, I'm in an open office space. I'm in a closed office at the moment, but there are like some Hebrew classes in the rooms next to me. So if you guys hear from some background noise, that's them. Don't worry, they can't hear me. Um, uh, 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 so there were on Monday, um, on Monday there was a, uh, an airstrike led by Israel, by the IDF in Syria. Um, and it dented Iran because we were able to eliminate some really high up officials that is the equivalent of an attack on Israel reaching anybody like Itamar Ben-Gvir, who is the Minister of National Security. I'm not going to go to the extent of saying somebody like Bibi Netanyahu because that's the Prime Minister and if you assassinate someone's Prime Minister, it's just like a uh, flat out war. Um, so the the equivalent of taking out some of any of the top 10, top 15 most important people in the Israeli parliament, in the Israeli government, um, people who are really big decision makers. Obviously, these people were running sort of a, a war operation, terrorist operation, and we, we killed them. We, the IDF. In response, um, Iran has continuously, Iran has continuously threatened Israel to retaliate and attack seriously. Now this happened on Monday, but the threat that we received here in Israel, guys, let's get this to 20 likes. We only have 15 people in the room. We gotta get more people in this room so we can talk about what's going on. I wanna share also very, very soon, I wanna share also like what essentially the weird things that have been going on on top of just the threat that we got from Iran. So let's get this to 20 likes, we need three more. Um, and and uh, yesterday, they essentially came out with a statement that within 48 hours, Iran would, uh, would carry out a deadly strike uh, out in Israel and primarily in places mostly like the center of Israel. When, just to give you guys an idea of like the landscape real quick, you know, I live in Tel Aviv and I'm considered very much the center of Israel. Um, and when an enemy threatens, they call it the Milikaz, the center, it's, it's kind of fucked up to say, but it's, a, it's essentially a little bit more of a increased threat than it would be to threaten a very far suburb. Not that their lives matter less, that's not, that's not the case. The case is that inside of Tel Aviv, for example, we have the Kirya, which is the head of the IDF, it's the headquarters of the Israeli Defense Forces, arguably one of the most valuable properties in the state of Israel, aside from, you know, um, the Prime Minister's house, the US embassies, the parliament, um, the old city in Jerusalem, so, you know, any of these, any army base, these would be very sensitive places that, that if an enemy were to attack, for example, Tel Aviv, but there's never been, ever, ever, ever been, uh, Nathan, I'll get to your question in a second, there has never been um, an attack directly at the Kiria because if somebody were to successfully hit the Kiria, it would turn into... Um, I'm not sure if the place that were to reach the Kiria would exist anymore. Okay, that's, that's me maybe being a little bit um, exaggerated, but that's kind of like how it is, how serious they take it. So Nathan, I'll get to it in a second. Um, VR coins, why what? So essentially, um, we have been, this cycle of like, I don't want to call it psychological warfare because it's not a matter of, of if yes or if no, it's a matter of when. I Iran is most likely going to do something, but I think the important thing to keep in mind here is it's not necessarily gonna come directly from Iran. It's going to come directly from one of their proxies. And at this point in time, you understand that their proxies consist of people like Hamas or Hezbollah or the Houthi rebels. With everything going on, it makes a lot of sense that Hezbollah will probably be the people who respond it is actually directly Iran because it doesn't, no matter how you look at it, there are tentacles that live under Iran and those tentacles are Hamas and the Houthi rebels and Hezbollah and other terrorist groups. So if Hezbollah attacks us, yes, maybe it wasn't Iran out in Iran flying over a trajectory missile, but uh, a projectile missile, but it's still, Hezbollah is still one of their um, chess moves. So however you look at it, Iran is not a matter of yes or no, it's a matter of when. And when these threats happen against Israel, we, we got 25 people in the room. Let's go. Let's get this to, can we get this to 20, 25 likes? No, I just left. Can we get this to 25 likes? Um, 
So it's, it's hard to explain it to people because I, you, you have to kind of be here to understand exactly what is like what the environment is, what the sentiment is. We continue life. We very much so continue life, even when a country like Iran threatens us after something pretty severe for them, like dented them and their people in charge, their staff. It's a big gesture to be able for the IDF to be able to do what they did. It uncovers also a lot of um, a lot of people who have claimed that the IDF aren't a strong army. I think an airstrike like this comes to show how strong their intelligence units are. To be able to identify exactly where these people were, exactly where they were inside the house, and drop a, an, a missile exactly onto that point where they were inside the house, requires an intense amount of intelligence that only extremely elite units can pull off. So, um, and Israel did it. And of course Iran is going to say something back. Of course an enemy state is going, they, anytime Israel success, successfully, it's kind of like an ego thing too. Like people in the Middle East have an ego and a lot of like the, the conversations around these responses with terror, a lot of it is like an ego thing. Like <clears throat> Iran is like, oh, this is a reason to do a serious attack versus throughout the past three or four weeks, I don't know if you guys have been noticing, but there are just missile attacks almost every single day in the North. But those don't get put on the national on the international scale. But now suddenly when we hit somebody who's more serious, it gets put on this huge international scale that they're going to um, drop bombs over Israel. Now, um, I'm gonna get to the questions in a second. I have continued my life. Everyone else around me has continued their life. And when you walk around Israel on a regular day, if an alarm randomly goes off in a period of time where maybe there wasn't fighting or war, it, it, it does take a second to kind of like, you're a little bit discombobulated for a few moments, but then you realize, wait, shit, this is part of like life here, and then you go. I think that that transfer, that, that moment of transfer from trying to figure out what's, what's exactly going on won't exist right now, because as soon as something goes off, everyone here will know that it is in response to what we saw on Monday. And I, I guess I'm saying that to you because it's subconsciously in our heads, it's subconsciously in mine, I weirdly, last night I went to bed and I sometimes put in earplugs just to stay away from any, any other noise and I have like a, 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 a white noise machine and everything. I didn't put the earplugs in last night because um, ironically so, on October 7th, I was woken up by a roommate <clears throat> because I did not hear the first siren, <clears throat> which is crazy. And I had my, I had my, ear, my earplugs in. In my, uh, in my ears while I was sleeping. So that for me has always been when these situations intensify, I do ch change my behavior a little bit. I kept my windows open, um, can't miss a siren, right? Um, so I wanna get to a couple other things that happened last night and this morning in Israel that are for sure directly related to Iran and what they're trying to show us right now. First, I just want to look at these questions. Nathan, what is the feeling in Israel after Gantz? It's hard, it's hard to answer this because the majority of people's attention right now are on, is on Bibi. And especially after what happened on Saturday, this previous Saturday, almost a week ago, when the or the organized protests against the government, against Bibi, joined with the entire hostage forum gathering, which essentially is every single Saturday night, and they each respectively gather in their own spot, but they merged together, and I talked about this on my live stream, I think on Sunday. <clears throat> they merged together and started to take to the streets because they're trying to get, they're trying to get Bibi out of Israel uh, out of the, uh, he's gone out of the government because of, because of what he's doing. And so I guess I'm saying that because there isn't a lot of discussion about any other political members right now in Israel. <clears throat> it seems foolish for people to, and I think one of the reasons, Nathan, is because, you know, since I've been in Israel, I've seen six elections. I've seen six elections in four years. These numbers don't make sense. 
Um, and it comes to show the level of corruption and I think how much of a broken system there is with voting and politics and of course the Prime Minister. <clears throat> Robert asks me, has there been warnings on Israeli national news or any new processes relating to new threats? <clears throat> so we have this thing called the Home Front Command, which is essentially the, which is essentially the, you're welcome, Nathan, um, the organization that will send out any alerts or notices when there is a national emergency going on, such as airstrikes or an attack. <clears throat> they'll contact you when they are starting to open up the underground shelters and every single area in Israel has specific locations that are posted on a digital map that you can refer to if you need to go to an underground shelter in the event that one, your house or building doesn't have a shelter or a mamad, which is like a safe room. Um, so they typically send those out it's, 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 it's a good thing if you don't ever hear from them, okay? So when you do hear from them, it's like, it's a big deal. They still have decided not to change any guidelines or anything like that, even though we are still on this, I don't know how to call it, um, <clears throat> waiting period, this loading period, because I think we are all, <clears throat> sorry, I keep clearing my throat, guys. I think we are all inevitably um, going to have to go through a response by them and we don't know how severe that response is going to be just yet so the the warnings have been on media on news people talk about it i always think about it like what what does the other side see like i'll go through israeli national news and like i'll check like what what we're talking about inside of israel and i always say to myself why are we not more careful about the things that we say here? Because every time that we create a vulnerability for ourselves on our national media, all you're doing is creating more sense of urgency for people on the outside. We have 35 people in this room. I love all of you. Let's get this to 25 likes. If you're brand new to this room, we are talking about Iran potentially coming at Israel. Don't leave. But in 25 minutes, we are joining the traveling clat, Tal, who is also in Israel. I'm joining his live. <clears throat> Let's get this to 40. Can we get this to 20, 25 likes? We have 22. Let's get this to 25 likes. So um, I what I was saying before is I think that Israel needs to be smarter about the things that we say about how we are feeling here. <clears throat> because when the other, when the enemies are seeing that we are vulnerable ourselves, it gives them more of an incentive to have a quicker sense of urgency and to want to attack us. So... So Robert, like we are, people here in Israel are writing about the, the sense of fear that I think is going around. And that's what they want us to feel. They want us to be nervous. They want us to be scared. These, when the head of Iran, when the Iranian regime <clears throat> publicly says that they're going to respond by an attack to Israel, it's, they don't tweet that every day. And when they do, it hits your your nerves a little bit harder than, than what it normally does. <clears throat> HD says you need to all seriously prepare for electricity outages, water and food shortages. You know, it's interesting HD. So and everyone else, I was going to start to tell you guys this and then, um, hello, I live in Tel Aviv. Thank you, brother. Um, HD and uh, whoever I is said hi. And Steve Harris says my baby lives in Tel Aviv. I pray. For, yes, I'm right here in Tel Aviv right now. So <clears throat> last night we had about a 25, a lot of people in Israel reported a, uh, a ser the server went down on WhatsApp and WhatsApp is the iMessage is the primary way of how people communicate here. And the server went down for like 20 minutes and it, <clears throat> it doesn't happen that often, maybe once or twice a year, but this one was definitely related to a cyber issue. So, um, it's crazy you have 35 people and a dude dressing like a woman and have over 500. It's ridiculous, these people. What do you mean, David? <clears throat> it's crazy you have 35 people and a dude dressing like a woman. David, what do you mean? Um, so what I was saying before HD and everyone else was that last night we had this 
server go down on WhatsApp. And then this morning, I've never seen this before. There were reports of the GPS routes on Waze getting completely screwed up. People, um, 35 people, the social media algorithms. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yes, <clears throat> agreed. So we had last night the WhatsApp thing and this morning the Waze. And so when you say we have to be prepared for electricity or short, a hundred percent. I, this is why I think they're, they're trying to make it clear that they have the capability of tapping into our cyber systems and that they have the ability to <clears throat> manipulate people's day to day. No WhatsApp means essentially no life here and no ways means no travel. So that's the situation right now. Um, <clears throat> Batia from Kenya. I fucking love Kenya. I love Africa. I want to go to Africa so bad. Is the attack on Iranian personnel worth the possible loss of Israeli civilians? Subjectively speaking, I can't make sense of the strike from a third party view. <clears throat> um, so Robert, the, there's no such thing as in, in my opinion, an attack on any personnel worth the possible life of Israeli civilians. One Israeli civilian, as we saw with Gilad mm -hmm. Shalit, when we traded, when we traded, when we handed over, uh, in exchange a thousand prisoners of war for one Israeli soldier, Trevor GTA greetings. I love Trevor. Love him. Um, I don't think anything that we do is, is worth the possible, um, one sec, Trevor, I'll tell you in a second, <clears throat> is worth the possible loss of Israeli civilians. However, if there is one country that makes Israel put their guard up the most, it is Iran. You can ask anybody that lives here. We're not scared nervous or scared of Iraq or Syria or Lebanon or the West Bank or Gaza or Egypt or Jordan. Iran is kind of like, cause we understand their nuclear, their nuclear weapon capabilities <clears throat> as do they understand ours. But we, yeah, I know, thank you. We're talking about the escalation between Iran and Israel, but Anytime that there's, I, I think the real reason that Israel has, has done this is to really show Iran how well we are further ahead than them at understanding like where their top ups are, up, their top operatives are, and that they can't fuck around. Part of me doesn't, part of me doesn't really think that they're going to do anything. We have this expression in English, like they don't want that smoke. I don't really think Iran wants to do any, they don't want to fight Israel. <laughs> How many times in history do we have to go back and show that Israel was the underdog every single time and that we have come out stronger and better in one every single time. It's, it's happening now and it's going to happen again. You can see what's happening in the North, like Hezbollah, like, like d Lebanon doesn't want the smoke with us. And if they don't, that means Hezbollah doesn't because Hezbollah runs Lebanon. And if Hezbollah doesn't want, doesn't want smoke with us, that means Iran doesn't. Why? Because Hezbollah is Iran. So <clears throat> I think it, it, it's a lot of like, it's a lot of perceived media, perceived marketing. If this top official, these tops, these top officials that got killed in the Israeli airstrike you know, and Iran didn't say anything in response, it kind of makes Iran look weak. So they, they have to say something. <clears throat> uh, Trevor, we're not having necessarily political discussions. I live in Israel. Um, my job on YouTube is to make Israel accessible for people all, all over the world by sharing the boots on the ground experience. And I talk about it from the perspective of an Israeli, but I also share a lot of media that is coming out of the Middle East, both in Hebrew and Arabic, to give people a real understanding of what's going on because what is fed to <clears throat> all you guys and people outside of the Middle East is really just um, jargon and really never a f an accurate representation of what is going on. Sonny's asking a really good question. <clears throat> is Israel capable of intercepting Iranian missiles and drones, drone barrages? 
Um, we have the, the Iron Dome, as you guys all know. And the Iron Dome does not have a 100% interception capability. It, <clears throat> it does a really good job. With that being said, I think we need to, to answer this question, Sonny. We need to look at the, the statistic, like the number of shots being fired in relation to the Iron Dome's capability at one time <clears throat> to be able to in intercept. So what I mean by that is the capabilities of Hezbollah to fire missiles from a numerical standpoint it is tenfold compared to what Hamas has. So Hamas had tens of thousands of missiles and Hezbollah has hundreds of thousands of missiles. And so it just makes the Iron Dome's job way harder to be able to <clears throat> to be able to get all of those and unfortunately when a volume like that is being fired at one point in time we don't have currently i think the defense infrastructure put in place to be able to prevent which means and we talk about this amongst ourselves as israelis which means that uh, when hezbollah does decide to attack it it does actually mean more damage and more deaths it's a thing that you can't avoid because we don't have currently the infrastructure put in place to be able to stop. Um, Trevor, thank you so much. It's amazing. That's the quickest subscriber thing I've ever gotten. <clears throat> Trevor, where are you from? Absolutely truth. Now is the calm before the storm, which is correct. Nathan says, sends them a message. Also, we're talking about a high military. Oh, okay. You guys are filling him on. To water, so Robert says, to water down the ego of Iran, they constantly shit test Israel in multiple ways to cause annoyance. Wonder what the benefit this method is to Iran. The, the, the benefit to Iran right now and the benefit to Hamas, the benefit to Hezbollah, the benefit to the Houthis, Trevor India, what's up, is Robert, is that anytime, guys, think about it like this. And, and, and by the way, I fucking wish more people were in the room right now because it has to do with, <clears throat> has to do with the video that I'm putting together. It's done. My newest video is done. It is 18 minutes long. It has a couple things I need to tweak, but it is an incredibly, incredibly, incredibly um, fascinating film about TikTok and the role TikTok has played in the psychological warfare war of Israel and, and Hamas. Pathfinder, Makore, Manishma. Um, but Robert, I want to get back to what you were saying before because at this point in the war, Israel has lost the media propaganda severely. And any time that Israel does something, no matter if it's carried out by the IDF and there was a calculated attack, it, was, it did not involve innocent civilians, it doesn't matter, Robert. Because anything that the IDF does at this point is deemed as genocide or bad. And as a result of that, when Iran or anyone op opposing Israel takes what Israel did, rightfully so, and throws that into the algorithm, we are seen as the bad people. <clears throat> and so the benefit for Iran, the benefit for any of these groups is that it engages more and more people around the world to hate Israel more and to defend a response by a place like Iran, to defend a response by a place like Hamas, to defend a response by a place like the Houthi rebels, because we saw a few months ago, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old girls on TikTok talking about how sexy and attractive Houthi rebel men are. If you guys don't believe me, go to TikTok. <clears throat> it's a thing. So the, the algorithm, and this is why I talked, this is why I just made this video and I really, really fucking hope this video, this video hits. Um, one, I'm due for one, but two, <clears throat> this took me three days to make. I did a lot of research and it's, it's just so important for people to understand how this works, Robert. Like, I can't really come up with a scenario that an enemy state to Israel does something and it's deemed as bad by the public eye. I'm gonna repeat that, I'm gonna repeat that again <clears throat> and I'm gonna get back to the comments. I know I see a lot here. We got 40 people in the room. Can we get this to 30 likes? We're gonna get more. Um, I do not see a scenario 
where an enemy state to Israel does something to Israel, no matter how severe, how barbaric, and how gruesome, and it is deemed as wrong or bad or not justified by the public eye. Th can you guys think about what I'm saying to you right now? This morning, special forces in the Israeli security, the Mossad, stopped a group of terrorists from attempting an assassination attack on the Minister of National Security, Itamar Ben-Gvir, with an RPG. And I have seen throughout the day, people upset about the fact that those people got stopped and that that attack wasn't taking place. <clears throat> so if people's minds have been completely rewired and reframed, their, their systematic framework for developing an opinion and perspective on this war comes from propagandic media that has manipulated and brainwashed people now. And it's the reason it's so dangerous, people, is that Iran claiming a response to what happened isn't a terrorist attack amongst the general public. It's a rightfully so response to a group called Israel who's apparently committing a genocide. I don't know how else to say it. <clears throat> and, and that, what I just said to you, and I'm glad this is recorded, what I just said to you is honestly, the zip notes of where we are on April 4th right now. That's where we are. If somebody in Israel right now got killed, <clears throat> if a government member got assassinated, and it got put on the public stage, a lot of people in the world would be cheering and clapping because it's, it's deemed as, well, guys, look at what happened on October 7th, and now look at what Israel's doing. So anything from October 7th on, if you guys want to attack Israel, you have our permission. Do you guys understand that that's, that's, that's the world right now? HD gets it. You guys, you guys understand that? Anything that anyone does to Israel or to Jewish people across the world, outside of Israel, in, in, in Europe, in Asia, in America, they're, they have already convinced themselves that they've found the reason to justify it as a freedom, as, as a fight for freedom versus fucking terrorism. It's beyond me, people. I'm going back to the comments. <clears throat> I gotta work on this thing. I don't know why. I think it's because like, talk so much and I always have to clear my throat. I need to work on it, so I apologize. I watched one of my recordings the other day and I was like, God, I don't know how these people stay on this live. I'm clearing my throat like every five minutes. We got 53 people in the room, 53 people. Oh, now it's 47, that's sad. Can we get this to 30 likes though? I love all you guys. <clears throat> Trevor is showing love and I'm loving it. We got South Africa. Do we have any questions? <clears throat> oh, endo endocrinology. Why is Israel committing another Holocaust? Today I'm going to choose not to engage with people like you. <clears throat> um, Torchy Beacon. I fucking love Torchy Beacon. If we were hypocritically in the worst case, sorry, probably in the worst case in the war and it would be dangerous to stay in Israel, which country is best to move for my safety? Mm. That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> maybe an, unpo no, I, don't, I wouldn't call this an unpopular opinion. I would just, I would just say that, um, so I'm just making sure that they're not clicking. We're good. Um, <clears throat> trust the tor Torchy Beacon. I would go to Germany. I mean, I, like I have an American passport, so I can. Hold on. <clears throat> yes, HD. That's that's true. I want to just write. Ten minutes. We go to. Tall. Fuck. Ten minutes. We go to Tall's 
live stream. Guys, in 10 minutes, we are going to the traveling class live stream. I'm going to be co-hosting with him. We're going to merge. <clears throat> um, yeah, Argentina, India, the Philippines, Germany. You know, I have an American passport. I could go to America. Um, but that's a really good question. The reason I'm having a hard time answering it, Torchy Beacon, is because Javion, what is up, is because I can't imagine, I, I, I refuse to imagine not having the state of Israel. This is our country and, and <clears throat> nothing will, nothing will wipe us off the map. It just won't happen. We're, we refuse, you know? It's like, it's not, a, it's not even a discussion. It can't be a discussion. <clears throat> Sunny asked, do you think that Hamas might have, might have the capabilities to attack Israel like that from the Russians? I don't think so, not Hamas. I, I think Hamas genuinely is weak now. Um, and once, once Israel like enters um, Rafa, I think, I think that might be close to the end of a lot of their military capabilities. We have seen the past couple of days actually some rocket attacks in Stelot, which is one of the villages on the southern border. So, Oops, sorry, that was not intentional if you guys didn't see me for a second. <clears throat> okay. Nathan's asking a good question. In Ayanora, you're right. I, I, I haven't been to India and I fucking love Indian food. I love Indian people. Do you guys know Moses in Israel? Um, Revi, she's a very good friend of mine. She is an Indian Israeli. She lives here in Israel and she's huge on YouTube. She had a video last week that did over 200,000 views. <clears throat> and um, I just love Indians, honestly. So India would probably be there, up at the top of the list. Uh, Nathan asked, the IDF hasn't entered into Rafa. Is it because of American pressure or are they waiting for Ramadan to be over? I think both. We've, knock on wood, ha haven't seen a huge escalation. Can we get this to 30 likes? We got 29 and 29. Somebody hasn't liked. I need, a, I need a 30th like. We gotta get more people in this room. We got about eight more minutes. <clears throat> we got 29. Any more? Can we get one more person to like the, like the room? Um, we haven't seen any craziness happen. Amazing, 30. Love you guys. We haven't seen any craziness happen on Ramadan here in Israel. So I think that Israel is showing a, I don't want to call it a nice gesture because what's nice about it to them it, when we enter because we need to get our hostages fucking home, but <clears throat> there hasn't been anything crazy here in Jerusalem. And so I don't think that they are pressing on the gas pedal just yet to go into Rafa, but there is pressure from the States too. You guys have to, and I talked about this in my video that I made about TikTok and the U.S. <clears throat> in comparison to October, November, and December has done a real, real 180 with their stance on this war and their support with, with Israel. And Israel needs to be very sensitive to that because they're our best and biggest ally. <clears throat> Uh, uh, um. <laughs> Canadian president, I swear to God, I joined the IDF. I'm not even Jewish. They let me join. We love you. <clears throat> Trevor, I love you. Oh, I'm going to collab, Anor. I'm going I'm to collab with Remy. She's amazing. <clears throat> okay, we have 40 people in the room. And we have five minutes, guys, in five minutes, in five minutes, in five minutes, we go to tall. <clears throat> How do I pin this, yo? What the fuck? It's not letting me, letting me pin. Anyways, <clears throat> anyways, um, It's 
not letting me pin. Does anyone have any questions before we go to Tal's room in a couple minutes? <clears throat> Thank you guys for being on here. Um, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so that's why my energy is a little bit low. But um, does anyone have any questions <sighs> about Israel, about what's going on, about how I feel, about what, it, what, what it's like here? Romero, you're just adding to the algorithm, my guy. Keep typing SUS. <clears throat> Guys, everybody, everybody types sus. Everybody types sus. Everybody types sus because SUS is typing sus. Everybody type it. Everybody type it. Everybody type it. SUS, everybody type it. That's right. HD, let's go. Let's go. Sus is short for suspect people. When somebody says someone's sus, it's like they're doing something that's suspect, I guess. Type sus, everybody type sus. Type, 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 sus, 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 sus. Unbelievable. Train, bloke, what is up? <clears throat> Sorry, I missed the start of this. What's the feeling in Israel about to happen with the seven aid workers? So, guys, keep typing sus, it's amazing. <laughs> um, HD, I love you. I uh, hope you're well. Um, Ramiro, what, what did you mean by sus? And um, <clears throat> train, the, the sentiment is that we all felt the same way and feel the same way um, that the IDF spokesperson talked about publicly, which is we share our, we, we send our condolences, deep condolences to the family members who were involved of uh, those who lost a loved one, we, like there's no, there, there's only downside to Israel. So um, there's only downside to Israel in a situation like that. And so I don't understand why people think that Israel did that on purpose. Like, I, like what about that situation made Israel's position in this war better? It doesn't make sense. We look worse. We're losing again, another, another hit in the propaganda war. It makes my job way harder too. So the sentiment is that it's fucked. The IDF is looking into it to make sure they understand exactly what happened, to make sure it doesn't happen again. <clears throat> Ramiro, I'm sus? Okay, cool. Well, you just helped my algorithm a ton, so appreciate you and your, how's your mental real estate doing? Uh, Hondo, what type of bike do I ride? I do not ride a bike. <clears throat> Nathan, thank you for joining. guys. It's 7.42. Um, if you go to my community tab. Okay, I'm gonna finish my sentence and then Charles, I'm gonna answer your question then we're gonna go to Tall. <clears throat> um, his name is The Traveling Clat. He is on live right now and I'm joining him. I'm joining him in Two minutes, okay? So I want every, there should be 33 people in this room should be leaving mine and going to him. That's his name. We're joining, I'm joining him on the live and we're gonna continue this conversation there. Real quick, Charles, what do I think about the sittings of the hostages parents in Jerusalem? I think that if there is anyone in the state of Israel right now that has the right to feel every kind of emotion possible and no real way to just, to, to, to explain where it comes from, it's them. And as a result of that, I do not, I love South Africa. As a result of that, I, it's hard to like judge them. It's hard to like, you know, I, I say this over and over. Um, Trevor, we're gonna, hold on one second. I say this over and over. If my fucking brother was taken hostage and my parents were mutilated in front of me in my fucking living room, I don't care about what I was doing previously in that moment to that moment in my life. I care about getting my brother back <clears throat> and getting to the bottom of who the fuck mutilated my parents and going for them. So the families of the hostages have a right to feel the way that they do. That's it, it ends there. Trevor, <clears throat> I do live streams three times a week. I make videos every week. Charles, you're welcome. I'm leaving now, everybody, as soon as this ends, go to Traveling Clats Live. I'll be there right now. Love you guys.